beautiful time that is mine. Knowing God, your presence is a present. Knowing God, your presence is a present. Amen. There's some people <clears throat> we all know by just amen, their last name or one name. LeBron, Prince, Oprah, Einstein. I know some of you know right now there's some of you. Amen. Generation and L. Name, one man. But I said Einstein, because Einstein made a quote. Uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, certainly there is a God. Whoever doesn't believe that is foolish. But then he said something else. He said, but we could never know him. You know, the, the essence is, I don't care how high your IQ is, you're going to always do and say something that will make it known. Amen. <laughs> that you need more class. Amen. I told you about the time I was on, the, on an elevator in the hospital, and all this, these three doctors in their white jackets were all, amen, met the stethoscopes and Amen. But while on the elevator, they kept saying, I don't know, I don't know what they kept, I don't know, I'm on the grill. All of them kept saying, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're always in the process that we can know more. And something will occur where God let us know what we don't know. <clears throat> now here. What good is it to believe in a God that you can't know. Amen. He created a world so that we can know what he's made. He created a book so we can know what he's done. And he, and he had a son so we can know who he is. That son was the word. Amen. Uh, we, beloved, we all need Red Sea moments. As I look around, uh, I can see all of you have had, some of you have had some Red Sea moments. All right. I just came over, uh, we recovered from a Red Sea moment. First of all, I thank God for it. And all of us need Red Sea moments. Yeah. Because if we don't have a Red Sea moment, we will not have a sea moment. All right. You need a Red Sea moment oh, yeah. so you can learn how to see. Yeah. Beloved, uh, what I love about Moses here <clears throat> is what he was an emotional, fearless, thought filled, obedient, and humble pastor. But above all else, but above all else Moses knew God. Yes. Oh, I need to take me somewhere. He knew God in a way I want to know God. Moses goes to the creator of all things and yeah. says, uh, I want to know you intimately. Uh -huh. and, and God says, okay. Oh, you know, I you <laughs> he goes to God and says, I want to know you intimately. Uh -huh. And God says, okay. All right, all right. I need you to get that before I go any further. He asked to know God intimately. Mm -hmm. And God said, okay. okay. And that's the kind of thing. I pray that this sermon makes you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. You know, you know, whatever you know, you're going to, somebody might want to throw that one into this. Amen. 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 God first. All right. 
and how well you know person. You see, <clears throat> you can know anything or anybody in three ways. Uh, you can know by observation. All right. You watch, you look, you observe. That, that gives you some knowledge. Then you can learn by education. By investigation, reading, rationalizing, thinking, studying, you know, like learning about a city through books. I never get on, on any different. Uh, <clears throat> a guy came to, to town, didn't nobody know him, but he knew everybody. He was talking to everybody, and, amen, talking personally and intimately about their lives, and he even proposed to a young lady. And so everybody in town was, you know, suspicious of him. And, the discipline, the brother, the girl, when they fight, they might. But what he had done was, while he was in the service, he subscribed to, to, to Mayberry's newspaper. Mm. Oh. All right. So he read all about the city and everybody. Uh -huh. Knew all about them, yeah. but he didn't know them. Right. But he just studied. Oh, you hear me? Yes. And a lot of us are that way about God. We know all about him. Uh, we believe in God, but we don't believe God. It's a difference. Amen. I can read about Abraham Lincoln. I can know all about him, but I never met. I don't know him. Then you can learn, amen, uh, by, <clears throat> by participation, personal experience. And one day, all of us in here are going to meet God face to face. But will you know him heart to heart? Will you know him casually or intimately? What's the difference? Casually is you know him by his words. All right. Intimately you know him by his way. All right. There's a significant difference. Mm -hmm. It's been how does hell Hot enough for you not to want to go there. Uh -huh. Right, right. But we've had some rain. Some of us were like, oh, it's rain. But I know God. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. He's keeping us from going around here looking like faith. Yeah. <laughs> you can personally go to a God you intimately know. Too many of us, too many of us, are name dropping God. Uh -huh. I know God. Only do it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference between name dropping God and knowing the God of your name. All right, all right. Oh, I know God. I know the man upstairs. No. Three ways that what happens when you really get to know God. The first thing is that intimate communication. Intimate communication. Uh, look at verses 7 to 10 of, 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 this, of this chapter. Keep your Bible. And it says, And Moses took the tabernacle and fished it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out into the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended. Oh, help me somebody. And stood at the door of the tabernacle. Yeah. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the time of the door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Mm. Now hear me. Uh, this was called a tent of meat. All right. It was called a tent of meat. Uh -huh. uh, beloved, hear me. Studying this, 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 uh, this passage and this chapter changed my personal devotional life. All right. It changed my prayer life. 
I no longer call my prayer room a prayer room. It's a tent of me. Tell you why I said that. If you, when I read the people there, and, and Moses knew what he was going to do. That when he went to the church of meeting, the cloud came down. Yeah. Oh, you better hear me. Yeah. To get along with God, amen, and get God along with him. Right. Now, don't miss this. Uh, this changed, beloved, the way I do my prayer. No longer doing devotion or quiet time. All of, a lot of folks do devotion. All right. You better hear me for a quiet time. Amen. Uh, Muslims and Hindus and Confucius uh, devote uh, and uh, practicing yoga is quiet time. Uh -huh. mm. Transcendental meditation is quiet time. All of them do that. Earplugs can give you quiet time. But every morning now, I have a meeting with God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you better hear me. Okay. Make this personal. I don't care. I didn't care less. I'm gonna be transparent. Okay. I say, Lord God, I'm giving you what you're giving me. Your full attention. Yeah. All right. Oh, help me some. I'm giving you what you're giving me. Your full concentration. Yes. You will never come to know God just listening to me preach once. You better hear me. Or reading books on how to get to know God. You need intimate communication. Yeah. And on this planet, the one who knows me best, amen, is Janine. Uh -huh. And it's in that because she's been kind with me. But it's kind of like a, a soundproof room. I can, I can, I, I hear it on, 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 well, I'm hear it. The only voice I can hear it is uh, the ones in the earphone. Okay. Now, I never forget, I was uh, with the band and, and, and they were doing a sound check. Oh, I never forget this. Uh, so, and Frank was sitting in the booth. And while he's sitting in the booth, every little button he pushed, he can only hear certain missions. Yeah. Only certain missions. So, and then, then we got to, uh, a certain button he pushed and all he could hear was his voice. Mm -hmm. He did all of that intimate uh, listen before the show. Sound check. See, that was at 3 o'clock. I think the show was at 10 that night. Mm -hmm. But he went in that studio, in that soundproof room, yeah. where all he could hear was each instrument individually, yeah. and then his voice individually before he, oh, you better hear put before the piece. That day I have gotten so intimate with God. Mm -hmm. Oh, hear me, hear me. I don't know how to sound you, but I'm just telling you. Yes, sir. The Bible says, look at verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, uh -huh. as a man speaketh unto his friend. Yes. And he turned again unto the camp. Yeah. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. What am I saying? Moses was so intimate with God that he took a young man with him, and when Moses walked out, the young man won't leave. Right. All right, all right. Oh, you hear me? Yeah. He made being with God so attractive that a young man that watched him said, I don't want to leave. Yeah, yeah. I want him to talk to me because yeah. I need just yeah. talk. Yeah. I am so intimate with God every day. Oh, I'm, I'm, you better hear me. That when I get up in the morning and go to my prayer room, I use my voice first. I use my voice prior to praying because I know God is so close to me, I don't want to be offensive. That's how aware I am Face. What's face to face for us? The scripture, mm -hmm. the spirit, and the son. Yeah. Well, that's face to face. Yeah. You better hear me. 
And I tell them, I only want to hear you, God. I put my phone in a place where it can ring. I have it off. I don't want the phone ringing to just to disturb what he might be saying. Right. What I might be saying. Look, because I don't care if you know if it rings, you might ignore it, but it's still not the conversation off. Because I don't care who you are, you still want to do that by the thing. You still want to go. How many times have you been talking to somebody who was not there with you anymore? But we, you know, we, we in older generation know it. You talk to a young lady and you do this two or three times. Yeah, go, you got someone to me? Yeah. <laughs> she gonna on me? You got someone to me? Because I don't have to go on Monday Friday. So that's, you know, so we, we can break this off in. Mm. Because one word can change everything. Right. You need to pay attention. All you ready to do. So you get amen, intimate communication. Secondly, you get intentional preoccupation. Amen. All right, all right. Oh, I need you to hear me on this. Please hear me on this. You see, in in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 32, Moses had left. Oh, I need you to hear me. I need you to get this so you won't get the rest. And while Moses was gone, the congregation got as they do when the pastor, you know when they say when the, when the, when the cast away. All right, all right. And they got so wild that they started having more, you know, they were just getting their groove on. Yeah. And they were getting their groove on to a point where uh, they would call, they called Moses, this is Moses, I'm like, what's this Moses? What's this, this idiot, you know, because he don't. You can't be, uh, you can't leave where you don't go. All right. And a lot of folks, a lot of folks figure, if I can't see you, then you don't matter. Mm, yeah. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. I, no, I never felt better going to grade school when I walked into school on a Friday morning and the substitute teacher. <laughs> oh, I don't care what y'all, 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 y'all. When I got walked in there and it was a Friday and it was a substitute teacher, Miss Hackens ain't here. You start telling people when they get the office, Miss Hackens ain't here. But some people sit right there. Miss Hackens ain't here. Like, they <laughs> Because when the authority is the one that holds you accountable, well, you ain't here. Yes. And a lot of us act like when we turn to God, we turn the lights off, God can't see us. Yeah. Yeah. So. They got her up, you know, Aaron wanted to hear everybody's praying, Aaron let them, amen, they took, you know, that's why I know back in the day, we didn't have any spirits back then. You know, they gave everything they had, you know, getting their orgies on, getting, getting their grooves on, the party, you know, music all loud, amen. They playing it loud, shooting everybody, amen. They jump, now hear me. And while God is talking with Moses, I don't miss it. God says to Moses, in chapter 233. In intimacy with Moses, God says, and the Lord said unto Moses, he's in there by himself with God, and God says to Moses, you all hearing me? He says, depart and go up in, thou and thy people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give. Get this. And he said, I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and the Shalom. No, it was not so. But, and the Jebusite. Now hear me. Then he said, Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee. You can go, but I ain't going. Okay, tell you what, what y'all missing. Okay. You say, amen. Now, this is job. Get this. He says, For thou art a stiff necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Now, here, yeah, this is yeah. the game. He said, Go into the land, which I saw to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See that? 
And he said, I will send an angel before thee. And I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, oh help me somebody, yeah. the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. But I ain't going with it. God had enough. God says, I'm going to give you my provision. Uh -huh. okay. Don't miss it. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you my protection. Yeah. You're going to make it through. Mm -hmm. I always keep my word. Yeah. Oh, help me. Right. I don't lie. Yeah, right, right. But you will go by yourself. You will not have my presence. Hear me. Come, come here. Okay. Don't ever do the dangerous thing of being satisfied with God's provision and his protection, but can't tell us about his presence. I don't want to get emotional. He said, I love you. I'm going to take care of you. I said I. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to make sure you get that safe. I'm going to make sure you got your food. Yeah. I'm going to make sure you get protected. Yeah. But I ain't going. All right. Yeah. All right. Everything you got. You got your God by. You got your safe and sound because God protects you. Yeah, yeah. How many in here, y'all? Uh, amen. Ain't the same. All of you was in the hospital recently. He protected you. Yeah. Provided for you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he Because he said. You can't believe him. He said, I'm going to protect you. I'm, I'm going to provide for you because you're mine. Yeah, yeah. 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 And too many of us say, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. You're saved. You're secure. You got salvation. You got a level of sanctification. Yeah. You're protected from hell. Yeah. You said, I'm satisfied and I'm cool with that. But couldn't care less if you spend every day, some time in your day, in the presence of God. Right. Shame on you. Yeah. Or oh, help me somebody. Mm. I'm just asking. They said, we get to go to Canaan. We get to drink the milk. We get to eat the honey. You drive out all our enemies. You just not coming with us. I'm done with that. How many of y'all? How many of y'all? I just want my bank account. I just want my car running back. I just want my house to be good. I just want my cure. I just want my health. I want my wealth. And I'll be happy. Let me ask you. Now, hear me close. All right, all right. Am I more in love with all God has given me? Or the God that God has given me all. Mm. Am I more in love with what God has given me? With the God that has given me, or am I more in love with what God has given me all? Lord, just keep providing and protecting. 
。あ、違う違う違う。Are you content with the blessing or the blessor?、Mm. My biggest fear, hear me, you all. Every time I get up to preach, Lord, never let me get in this pulpit and not be filled with your presence. God tells me every morning, Stephen, I feel the fear. They don't come and do it. You ain't drawing. You, if I gave you a pencil on a piece of paper, you can't draw a crowd. But if I feel you, Stephen,、yes. then you feel the poor.、Yes. All right. Yes. Amen. From this day forward, Tommy Hill, don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. I don't care where you go, what you do. You're protected, you're provided. But plead with him for his presence. Yeah. 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 Don't go anywhere without his presence. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, help me somebody.、Yeah. Hear me, God. Lord, never let me get in this pulpit. Please, Lord. If there's anything in your life that's more vital, essential, Important in your life than having the presence of God, then you don't know God. All right. I'm getting in the business. All right. If His presence is not the most important and vital thing in your life, then you don't know God. Okay. Yeah, I said it.、Yeah. Amen.、Yeah. It's vacation time, it's here. It's summertime. Some of y'all in the way place have got back in place. You want them in the, in the hospital. You want me in the operating room? You want me on an airplane? You want me in the car? Amen. You want me going out of town? Other than that, God can sit this one out.、Mm. I'll call you when I'm ready. How do I know that? Because what you do, if, there are things you wouldn't do if you knew he was white. There are some things you wouldn't do. If you just knew God was watching. Oh, yeah. You、yeah. yeah. yeah. say, oh, I'm going to pray to God. No, you don't. Because some things you're doing and saying, you wouldn't be doing and saying if you knew. Yeah. Yeah. Why ain't you, why ain't you got a, a beer right now? Brothers and sisters, why ain't you got a beer sitting here? Why don't you have a secret or your drunk? Or your drink? Or your body? Why don't you have it now? Right, right. Why not? This cool to have work, have this on. Why don't you have it? Yeah. I ain't gonna do it in the chair. <laughs> Now hear me. Beloved, all of us got, well, not all, most of us got kids. You might go to the game and they play on the team, you, you know, you enjoy the game. But you watch everything your son throws.、Yeah. Yeah. They're at the game and there's a lot of folks there, but you watch everything. Yeah, yeah. And some of y'all's kids, you coach personally. Dad and son. So you see everything they do. Somebody might say, You know, I love the way your son ran that guy down and, and tackled him. But you say, son, you could have stopped him much earlier if you turned on that door. Right, 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 right. Because you watch him. And when your son is out there playing, and, and his dad is there, He don't care what the crowd s a y He's looking over to the sideline to see how bad it looks. Because his dad is present. I'm a preacher. Too many of us are willing to travel, but we need a captain behind. 
Uh, look, look at uh, uh, verses uh, 15 and 16. I'm not, I'm not close. I'm not kidding. Moses said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not with him. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in thy, that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? What he's saying is, your being with us is going to separate us from everybody else. Yeah. 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 Beloved, you're not, you're not kicking because you belong to Compton Hill. <laughs> Being a Compton Hill to the end of us. Dog, I belong to you. Yeah. I don't even smell like Pastor Bison. I don't even smell like you. Yeah. Yeah. That when I'm somewhere else and say I'm going to Compton Hill, they're not surprised. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Oh, help me somebody. Where it shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Yeah. Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated? Help me somebody. I and thy people from all the people upon the face of the earth. Because your presence. I couldn't care less about your provision or your protection if I don't have your presence. Hallelujah. What are you saying? Are, are we saying that? Yeah. I'm not going anywhere without you. Yeah. Yeah. Judge need all the time. If we break up, we, you know, oh, that's all right. Where are you going? I'm going God glory. He already has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You see, judges get glory from their roles. Police will get glory from their past. Generals get glory from their uniform. But God is the glory. Yes, sir. Walk with me here now. Let's look at verse 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my faith. There's, there shall no man see me in there. And the Lord said, Behold, that's the faith by me. When you love for God to save you, come here, please God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you have been in a crowd and knew somebody and they said, Oh, you don't be with me? God said to you, come on, please God. Yeah. Yeah. What if God said to you? Come on, bless the place. If you desire. Yeah, yeah. He says, There is a place by me, mm -hmm. and thou shalt stand upon the rock. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <coughs> the manifestation of God's glory. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something about God's glory. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one face that you've never seen in your life directly. It's yours. You've never seen your face directly. No. All you see is a reflection of your face. Yeah. Now here we go. You see a mirror and a mirror, you see it on the photo. But here. You do for me what I can't do for myself. You can see my faith. I can't see my faith. Right. I can see your faith. Uh -huh. You can't see your faith. Okay. So all you see when you see your faith is reflection. That's what how we see. All we see of God is what we see the reflection.
that was with him three and one half years, prayed with him, talked with him, walked with him, amen, cried with him, well, they were good. He had 12, but he had three to put him all the time. So what Jesus did is, I'm going to take you on a model of transfiguration, where you will see me in the presence, and I'm just going to give you a glimpse of my glory. And so what, they went up there on the mount. On the way up there to the mount, while they were on their way up there, a cloud came down. So they get up there on the mountain. Oh, I love this. And Peter says, I saw Moses and Elijah. Now, Elijah never died. Moses had been dead for a century. I can't wait for when God calls me. I want to see my family. Yeah. This, this is what God this is how I'm going. He says, I saw Moses and Elijah. Uh -huh. uh, what kind of revelation? He saw a man that he never seen before, that been dead over, over a century. Yeah. He also yeah. saw a man that had never died. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. So in that model of transfiguration in God's presence, then Jesus gave him just a glimpse. Of his glory. So the law and the prophets was talking to the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets was talking to the law and the prophets. So he's talking to, to, to Jesus. Not even Moses talking to Jesus. I get this. Moses didn't have dirt on his face. He didn't just come out of the grave. So let the first thing that lets me know is that, hear me. They, made my, they buried my dad in Calvary Cemetery. Yeah. They buried my mom in Calvary Cemetery. But when I see them, they won't be dirt all y'all in here. They won't be dirt on their faces. Help me, somebody. Now, not only that, but when they talked to him, help me, Elijah Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. So let me build tabernacles for you, for Elijah, and for Moses. You didn't introduce us. But the revelation being in your presence, I know who they are. Yeah. You didn't introduce us. Being in your presence, I know who they are. Oh, you ain't hearing me. And then, help me somebody, there's six voices up there. It's Peter, yeah. James, John, Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. Yeah. Yeah. For the third, for the seventh voice, hey. A seventh voice said, hey, wait a minute. Peter, let me let you know something here. I appreciate what, what, you, what you're saying. But let me make something. Let me get something straight. Elijah and Moses, I like my love. Like, this is my beloved son. And to whom I am well pleased. To he be him. Yeah. There's no doubt. I know you've been hanging with him for three and a half years. So he's been with me from eternity past. I know you would enjoy the stuff he said and done for you. Hey Amen. See, I know you like the fact that when Elijah went up on a chariot and it was on fire. And Moses said, people, Moses said for my presence. I know you like all that. But...
Do you have any guests? Any guests? Now and forever. 